Ya lain. Good morning, good morning. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? Is everything okay? Loud and clear? So we have a guest for today. <laughs> a special guest for today. All the way from Davao and Cebu, I think. Hey, Kapatid. Good morning. Good morning. All right. I can hear you, Jeff. Good morning, brother. Nice to meet you guys. Can you hear me, Will? Yes, loud and clear. Very good. What about Jeff? Oh, uh, I can hear you. Maybe he has a problem. Is this any better? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Must be something wrong with my headphones. Uh, all right. It's okay. So, yeah. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, is Miss Ned around? She's the one taking care of Haley. So, let's see if we she could, you know, uh, join us uh, today. But anyhow, good morning to uh, all the 21 uh, viewers. And once again, good morning to our panels today. So, um, wait a moment. Let me just try to change the battery of my camera. <laughs> just hold on, okay? <laughs> yeah, you can, you can speak, guys. You can speak if you want. Yeah. Uh, Jeff, you can introduce yourself and where are you from and right now you're situa uh, situated in what city? Hi, my name is Jeff. I'm uh, from the United States, recently from Tennessee. Uh, been here for about three months, uh, living here in Davao, uh, having a great time. Uh, no regrets so far. Uh, in fact, I'm going down today to get my medical for my driver's license. So, mm -hmm. so I can be legal on the road. I see. That's cool. So thank you so much for that. And what about uh, your brother, Will? What's happened? I'm Will. I'm from the United States as well, from Florida. Been here the same amount of time, about three months. Um, no regrets, really. Um, takes some getting used to. Different area down here in uh, southern Cebu. Okay, good to good to hear, guys. Everyone, so so far it's like positive, right? <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm still waiting on my ACRI card in order for me to go to the LTO to get my driver's license here. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, that's really uh, really important, right? Because if you are staying more than 59 days, that will be really necessary, right? Yep, I, mean, I like to drive way too much. <laughs> <laughs> I need okay. to go get my CR card next week. Mm, so it'll be okay. four to five weeks. Uh, we'll I... ask you questions about that later on <laughs> so that they will know. Okay, so good morning to your brother uh, Ma Michael McNeil. Good morning. And say hello to Steve O. Phillips. Actually, he's in Cebu also. Steve O. Yeah, Steve O. <laughs> And um, okay, Jeff, there you go. The no, barbers. No. So the barbers have a question right here. Hello, Roger and Ismi. I have a serious question for you too. If religion, a big part of a Filipina life, why so many newly married Filipinas shank the vows out the window and <laughs> their belief? <laughs> you know, um, temptation here in the Philippines, like all over. So. Sometimes they forgot about the teachings or the belief 
here in the Philippines. Even Filipinos. So, what about you? What about no, you, Jeff? What can you say? Well, when it comes to religion, I asked my girlfriend what her belief is. And I'm cool with it. It's not mine. But hey, as long as you don't hurt anybody else, I don't care what religion is. Yeah, yeah. So I, should, uh, I think that's happened like all over the world. And we cannot really uh force them because that's their you know um if they really jump into temptation then it's a big problem and what about you will um well i'm more of a spiritualist versus religion but my girlfriend is catholic obviously so that doesn't bother me i mean it it, it just it is what it is. Everybody has their own, you know, religious preferences. So sure. me being former military, I'm I'm used to being around diversity. So it's all good. <laughs> so it doesn't really matter, right? It really depends on the person. Like I said, that uh, would be their problem if they would be jump into that the temptation is they don't think about the consequences like after, right? Okay, well, I thoroughly, the question. Believe, mm -hmm. I, mean, I thoroughly believe, no matter what you believe, there there will be a, a reckoning, a judgment at the end. Well, yeah. always keep yep. an eye on the horizon. Exactly. So, by the way, guys, I have something to, um, like, uh, big shout out, by the way, to the contributors to our project. And I love to show it here. To you guys, uh, who are those people? Um, let's wait a moment. Share screen. Okay, so. As you can see in the screen right now, the, these are the, the people uh, who made the donation about the farmers uh, for a cause in the mountain. And a big shout out to Stephen Bradshaw. And he donated 5,000 peso and total amount received is 4750 That's for the farmers and then the bridge. And shout out to Eric Zum. He donated also 1056 and then total amount received 994 and also uh, to Edmund McBride or Mac, no, McBride. So he donated 250 and total amount 224. So thank you so much, guys. So we're just trying to make this um, happen in the future, uh, just slowly. <laughs> Well, Rome wasn't uh, built in the day, so. Yeah, yeah. So oh. the bridge is really, you know, uh, expensive. Ah. But uh, we're thinking about lower cost, which is um, maybe made out of bamboo. Just temporary, you know. Because if we're made out of steel or cement, that would be too too much. Then... In order for us to lower down the cost, probably we can uh, go with the bamboo, just temporary bridge. Hey, Roger, uh, have you checked oh, yeah. in for any help? Sorry? Have you checked in on getting any government assistance? Okay, yeah, that's the thing I asked, but uh, the, the barangay captain said, if you will do this project and ask the locals, let's say, for example, the mayor, it takes very long because, you know, uh, the process here is really slow. Well, that's fine. We can wait with that. But uh, for now, maybe um, we're thinking, if possible, we can just have the temporary bridge, like the small one, like made out of bamboo. Mm -hmm. 
So, uh, okay, the barbers can single life as a newly born again Filipino from the Philippines. Uh, what do you mean by Sounds that? Like mm -hmm. All right, so the, the barbers. Texas Tisori, good morning. <laughs> the neighbor of uh, Jeff. <laughs> Oh, can't wait to see you today. <laughs> Very good. Say good morning to hello from Oklahoma, USA. Yeah. You can join us, Texas, if you want. <laughs> good morning, Joseph Marquez. By the way, um, I have a question right here. Uh, Jeff, this is for both of you and Will. Right. Um, there are so many Asian countries, right? Uh, why you choose Philippines? Uh, let's start with uh, Jeff. Oh, sorry. Uh, we can't hear you, Jeff. Probably because they, the Philippines has a history with the United States, the uh, speaking English. Uh, not too sure what's going on here. <laughs> uh, there you go, man. <laughs> Turn up. See that? Okay. okay. Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you better. American out of, made labor. Okay, go ahead, Jeff. So, okay, I, I mean, considering the history between the Philippines, the, the history between America and the Philippines was one reason. English was another but like i said i did a lot of studying you know for the last year or so and i thought the philippines would be the best uh best match yeah i appreciate the culture uh you know just just it just appealed to me right off the bat mm. so oh. okay thank you so much by the way so, for you know choosing uh, that's philippines. pretty much how i ended up here Plus, I uh, you know I made friends with Texas and a couple other other vloggers. <laughs> okay, Texas is there. <laughs> so, it's the best place ever, <laughs> right? Yeah. What about you, Will? What about you, Will? Uh, the reason I chose the Philippines yeah, is crashing the party. All the other, out of all the other countries around here. Um, one, I was looking at economics as far as cost of living. Two, there's a VA um, center here right in Manila, right down the street from the embassy. And it's centrally located to all of the other countries. So it's nothing but a, a puddle jump to go somewhere. Like I can just go to Mocktown Airport and say I wanted to go virtually anywhere. It's right there. Um, also, like you, Jeff, I did research for about a year and a half before moving here, and I love the culture. That that right there was that was the the breadwinner right there was the culture. You can simply just walk down the street and talk to people and not have to worry about violence. <laughs> True, you know. Yeah, that's a good thing about you know. Uh, Philippines, um, yeah. you can really say that you can't encounter big troubles with the locals as long as you are um, your relationship with the locals is good. Well, you can earn much respect from them. So, yes, indeed. Yeah. Good morning to uh, Robert from uh, Barbiton. And then Lily, good evening. Good evening, people. <laughs> okay, Steve-O, same just got six months extension to pick up my new ACR card. Okay, wow. For sure, a lot of you guys like trying to process your ACR card. <laughs> I did mine when I extended my visa for six months. I see. So, Jeff, okay. Texas Tisoy, looking good, man. Very proud of your camera. Looks good. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, Go ahead, Jeff.
Yeah, I did. I get, got my ACR card when I did my last extension was for two months. And they uh, said it'd be four to five weeks before I could pick it up. So it's been like four weeks. So I see. So I'm, hopefully I won't like need my have... ACR card to apply for my uh, Philippines driver's license. Mm, okay. So you have to wait like one month before you can pick up your ACR card. Uh, it may be available. Uh, I just didn't want to. Okay. So good morning to Colby. Then I'll then I'll do the uh, six month extension when I pick it up. I see. So one second. Good morning to Colby. Good morning, everyone. I'm living in Cebu City for six months. I have my S R R V. So far, everything is going well. Okay, good to know. I'm from New Jersey. Hi, nice. Leonard. Okay, live, looking good. <laughs> okay, shout out to Brian Shoulder. Hello, Roger. I have heard that foreigners have been kidnapped in the past and held for ransom. <clears throat> Is this true? And it's still going on. Um, I never heard now, mm -hmm. but that was before a long, long time. Maybe, uh, you know, all over the world, there will be a bad place, right? So don't go there. If you know that that place is too dangerous, right? So many islands in the Philippines that you can go, which is really safe as well. But once again, I never like heard about that now. That's a long, long time. Okay, so um, what about uh, this question, Jeff? What can you say after? Okay, since you've been staying here for three months already, what can you say about like after staying one month in the philippines because you can say nothing like after two weeks or what but after one month what can you say uh, uh, I, I, was, I, I felt very comfortable uh i fairly acclimated to the the climate i mean after a month i didn't i stopped using the ac uh as far as meeting the local people, uh, very friendly. I've made uh, kind of uh, at the local market, uh, there's a couple of vendors I kind of build a relationship with, and they recognize me and they wave hello. Uh, I, I, have not, I can't say enough nice things about even after one month. So, mm. okay. That's, 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 I mean, the food's good. I mean, I've I've rarely eaten any American style of food since I've gotten here, so it's just as good <laughs> local food that I actually prefer. I see. <laughs> I think you here. have a good, you know, stay right now in in Davao. Yeah, mm -hmm. we we know that Davao is a perfect place to. No, I mean, uh, like say after a month, you know. I mean that's. Okay, so we had the pigs of the bridge appear to be still construction. Yes, it is. Uh, it's really now that I have a uh, set of wheels, I, I plan on doing more exploring. Okay. Okay, so um Ronald, what about the wooden or bamboo bridge? Yes, that will be an option, Ronald. And um what about you, Will? after uh, staying in one month or one month in the Philippines? Well, it's funny <laughs> because I don't use aircon, which is really? the complete opposite of what I'm used to. However, really? it's, it's great. No hot water shower because the water, even though it's cold, it's actually quite refreshing. It doesn't matter what time of day or night it is. Jump in the shower. It, it's like, really? How? How? Why did I use hot water before? <laughs> Unless it was cold out. Um, the, it, as, for, as far as American foods, the only thing I have eaten that was American was McDonald's. Once. Outside of that, it's all local food. Matter of fact, there's like quite a few people here in the subdivision 
that sells food. We actually have a group chat that everybody posts what you know they made, and I'll just text them and say, "Hey, give them my ad." I'll give them the address and be like, "I want this and this amount," and they'll just bring it to me. And I'm like, "This is so good!" <laughs> like I don't even half the time I don't even have to leave the subdivision to go to a store. Mm, okay, so all they need to do is uh, the text them. Yep. Okay. Then yep. I, okay. I need something. Or just go, or just walk over to one of the I don't know five or six stores that's here in the subdivision, and it's not even that big of a subdivision. There's like a store on every other block. <laughs> oh, like Sari Sari store. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love it. Okay, but regarding for the you know um, the hot one or the hot water, I think that's no need if you are living in the city because the water is um, warm already. Not unless if you are in the mountain. <laughs> no, we're I'm down in Karkar. So yeah. it's like from what I've heard, deep province, because just to get to the seven eleven, whether it's a motorbike or a car, it still takes like fifteen minutes to get there. But you know, even still with all the sorry sorry stores Ryan, including the two that's right outside the gate. It's like to go downtown, to go to Casimo, it's literally just to go grocery shopping or to buy something, you know, something else. Like yesterday, I just went and bought a pair of clippers from downtown because there's no barber shops around. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to go to uh, like the city or what? Um, what about uh, you, Jeff? I think your place is uh, so accessible to uh, everything, right? Oh, we can hear you, Jeff. Uh, yeah, it's not hard to get around. Uh, there, you can have your personal transportation. I think there's a bit of a lag. Yeah, maybe... Uh, uh, the, the connection or what but it's okay we can we can hear you uh, like hey, i Jeff, said if you... things are pretty accessible from here uh let me plug okay okay so uh, yeah like I get, uh, Texas said there was a bit of a delay on my end. Uh, yeah, it's, there's a delay on your uh, end, but um, so, maybe because of but, the, you know, the connection. In uh, other words, uh, pretty accessible from, from where I'm at. I'm out on the outer edge of the city. Okay, so... Uh, the barber, barber said that, I understand that I was just putting out there for those men that is getting newly married. I'm also uh -huh. now five minutes behind because of answering personal at work. Okay. So, MS, good morning. Maybe I'll First try to time go out in your life. and come back in. Okay. Okay. Sure. Uh, sure, Jeff. So, my first time to be in your live stream, it's nice to see a Pinoy couple. Thank you from Phil Can. All right. <laughs> BJ, the steel bridge in, in video is not the one who wants to replace. It's just an example. Yeah, that's an example. So regarding for the bridge, I think we have to really ask um, a uh, constructor. We need to get an advice from them, and we have to visit the place. That's just from the so, here. Yeah, so that we can... Uh, estimate and also we can see what's the the location is okay so uh thank you so much through blind eyes i told you i would help roger i am man of my word you filipinos are good people it's not hard to see that i'm sorry i cannot do more right now that's okay anything anything good morning to rudy huh no. Okay. You you can test your your mind right now. 
Yeah. Okay. I think it's so good. Okay. Jeremiah, hey, you guys keep up the good work. I watch your channel from nowhere uh, in Montana. So keep up your head up. Keep the work. Uh, Roger, is this any better? I changed headsets. Is this yeah, any better? Yeah, we can hear you. What about you, Will? Can you hear Jeff? Yes, absolutely. Loud and clear. Okay. All right, thank oh. you. By the way, I just want to make uh, some, you know, I just want to make and review the the recent video we have about the saying goes here in the Philippines, like matandang mayaman madaling mamatay. Sorry for that um, sayings, guys. But that's the sad reality in the Philippines. Um, especially for the older generation, they would say, oh, you have to find older foreigners so that, you know, you have a b brighter future. Sorry for that. Because there are some, like, comments there that, you know, they're offended or something. But that's the, the truth. Sorry, guys. I just want to apologize for that saying. So, uh, Leonard, Houston is getting more dangerous to live in than the Philippines. Okay. Steve O, morning, BJ. Okay, BJ, how about the steel suspension bridge? Maybe uh, cheaper than the steel bridge you showed in the video. Actually, we have so many different options right now, but we have to make sure what's the, the cheapest one. So it really depends on the budget, but in the future, we can do it. Um, for now, it's just applying what the best thing to do. And thank you so much for all of your suggestions. Um, we do really appreciate that. The places, okay. I know you use Food Panda always, Lol. Have you used Food Panda? Jeff and Will. Okay, it's anyway. not a, it's not available in my area. Neither is Grab. Oh, okay. Yeah. I've uh, yeah. used I've used Fan, uh, Panda Express and Grab. Mm, okay. So very convenient, right? <laughs> oh yeah. Now I have used Grab in Angeles City. Oh and, okay. And it works great there. Um, also, up in Cebu City, Grab works, but down here, nothing's available for Grab or Food Panda. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> so yeah, because Car Car is uh, a little bit on, um, like, on the province part, right? Yeah, it's it's actually um, the next city down from Naga, the industrial mm -hmm. city of the south. Okay. So thank you. And Pierre Lady Edge in the stream. Steve O, lol, we have water flow from a river nearby. Keep drums full. I usually pick the warmest water of the three drums. Having no rain five days. River water is nice, warm enough. Tabu tabu. <laughs> Do you use tabu? No. Like a dipper? I don't. <laughs> uh, I've tried. Uh, it'll be a last resort when I go to the province. <laughs> and what can you say about, you know, using Tabu, Jeff? <laughs> uh, I usually end up taking a bath from the waist down. <laughs> I mean, I have used it in the shower, which is great, you know. But as far as anything else is concerned, yeah, I'll take a, a package of wet wipes with me. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can try it at will. I, I haven't I haven't tried I haven't tried it yet. Um uh, I've I've I'm not gonna lie, I've been a little scared to try it because I was like, yo, it's gonna be water everywhere. <laughs> yeah, I, I prefer the bum gun. Yeah, yeah. The for a matter of fact, I got some pictures of one the first one I seen on Japan Airlines on my flight over. And the thing was so high tech. I'm like, why does this toilet have so many buttons on it? <laughs> and it actually had a picture of everything. It was like eight, nine different options. I'm like, um, no, I've been flooded this bathroom on this plane. 
<laughs> that's why okay. they put tile floors in the CRs. <laughs> that's yep, true. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, so Barbers, um, he has a question to you guys. Um, climate, I was stationed in Guam and it was really hot until you adjust it. But one problem, you would scratch yourself in your sleep until you bleed. Have you dealt with this? Not me, because I usually keep a fan literally like two feet away from me. So I don't really, as far as climate, like it, the climate here is just like Florida. Always hot, always raining. So adjusting to the climate here wasn't a big deal. The um, Like I said, the biggest transition for me was I'm used to constantly being under air con and then coming here, it was the complete opposite. I'm like, I've gotten used to it now mm -hmm. to where I've come to the, I'm like, I don't really need air con unless I want to, you know, jack up the electric bill. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys already received like some kind of electric bill, right? Uh -huh. So w what can you say about that? My electric to, yeah. bill for this past month was 1,200 pesos. My water bill, however, was 4,000 pesos. And the reason that it was actually 4,000 pesos was because there was a leak that we had to get fixed. Oh, okay. but, that's, but really, normal, that's really big for 1,000. Yeah, yeah. But it was it, it's because of the leak. And But normally, the water bill is only a few hundred pesos, and the electric bill right around to between 600 and 1100 it just depends mm -hmm. okay so it depends on the usage right and also the let's say the aircon like how you use it like 24 hours mm -hmm. or now what about you jeff uh my last two uh, electric bills been about 2200 pesos uh my water bill is roughly about 100 pesos a month I went ahead and paid about a year ahead, so I don't have to worry about that. Um, like I said, my my bill might be higher because I do run fans, you know, pretty much all day, just keep the air moving. So, okay. but, but other than For that, sure. it's not not as bad as some others I've heard. <laughs> Okay, but for sure uh, there will be a big difference, right? From uh, in your country and here yeah. in the Philippines, like you can say, "Oh, it's really small." <laughs> yeah, it's a huge difference. The electric bill oh, back yeah. in Florida was at a minimum five hundred dollars. Wow, no. <laughs> it's crazy. That's our budget, monthly budget, Will. <laughs> yeah, the the the, the, the yeah. utilities in the U.S. is crazy. That's nice. For you know, sure, guys. You my electric really bill back in the States here. was man, it was about 80 bucks a month. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so. If you are, you, you guys, like, you can really save when you're here in the Philippines, you know, because in terms of uh, sample, the rent is not that expensive. And then also the utilities and other stuff. We can really maximize your uh, pension here in the Philippines. Yeah, the two things that are that I've found to be the most expensive is electric, and that just depends on the area that you're in. And the food cost can be just about the same as it is in the U.S., but that's subjective because that also depends on the area. Um, public markets is. I highly advise going because if you get a deep freezer or even if you don't have a deep freezer, if you want to just get a bunch of meat and have it stored, you can get it. Um, I prefer to go at like 2 a.m. to the public market because, or a wet market rather because mm -hmm. you get the best deals versus Absolutely. going out in the middle of the day. You go at 2, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, it's like everything is pretty much fresh. So you can have your meat cut any way you want it. Um, that's also where I first had Lapu Lapu. That is such a good fish to eat. Jeff, if you haven't tried Lapu Lapu, oh my God, you're missing out. 
<laughs> you can try that, Jeff. Uh, the, the 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 meat is really fresh and yeah. it's really good. Uh, usually, we go to the uh, local market usually by seven in the morning, and that's when the stuff is pretty fresh. Now, the market I go to, I don't know if they're open all night or not, but yeah, you definitely go early for the best stuff. Yeah, so. absolutely. As too, often we often like go to the the wet market or public market like around six or seven in the morning. And um, but uh, thank you so much for the super chat, beard, uh, beard or what? Drop that link and are you case and real foreigners in here? So what link? I'm sorry. I so how hey does anyone know how they are doing in northern Luzon? Um, I seen the Hurricane Henry and quite a number on that area. Hope everyone is okay. Yeah, absolutely, guys. Um, what about you, Jeff? And well, is everything okay in your place? If you don't mind. Here, yeah, I actually um, have a buddy of mine that live in um, Angela City, and he was telling me yesterday that the wind was picking up. Uh um, Mm -hmm. uh we uh you're cutting off uh jeff uh, uh yesterday we had a nice breeze but other than that but then you know minute now for the most part seems to be uh try this again uh uh most of Mindanao is pretty much out of the typhoon alley we rarely get anything maybe some bad thunderstorms mm, okay so here in San Carlos, it's pretty good. The weather is nice, still a little hot, you know. Uh, the temperature right now is 30 uh, degrees. Um, but sad to say, in northern Luzon, they really encounter. the. When I saw the video and the news, well, the wind is still strong. And uh, I've heard that there will be like 300 people died. I'm not sure the number, but hopefully everything is like, you know, um, doing safe. And they don't have electricity too. So Steve-O, oh, yes, wow. Tavo, no other way here in the mountains. will take some getting used to. <laughs> it's really... It's really hard when you are in the mountain or in the province. Like, you know, you have to get used to it, what they have or what, yeah, what they have in the mountain. So Texas, Jeffrey, strong. <laughs> Loud and clear, thank you. Leonard, Texas, more murders this year than before. From what's real foreigner? The question from another person about dangerous yeah. places mainly applies to Southern Peach, like, Cholo, Tawi, Tawi, Hulo, Tawi, Tawi, and anywhere some one flashes well. Yes. I think all over the world, there are like bad places. Uh, like I said earlier, all you need to do is to, you know, uh, be precautious and try to search what are, what are those places which is really dangerous. Then don't go there. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's literally just using common sense. Yeah, I mean, yeah. When, when you're out in public, you know, like me, for instance, if I go to the ATM, I watch my back. You know, I, I don't walk around with a bunch of bills in my hand. I mean, granted, this is a cash based country, but even still, like if I go to pay for something, you know, if it's, you know, if it, I don't pull out large bills and I don't pull out a whole lot of cash either because then somebody be like, oh, look. <laughs> and somebody 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 might get tempted you know it's not something that you ne necessarily have to worry about here however there are some individuals that may feel froggy and like you said that's anywhere in the world correct correct so yeah we have to use our common sense it's really important and <clears throat> rudy i have used taboo when I was in province, when I visit my mother's province in Baku or Cavite, Tabing Dagat or Daang Bukid. So I never had these issues done. We're in the streets for real. Okay. And um, 
What do you think about Filipinos? Well. Oh, but like then any they're... experience of talking to the locals or locals? Absolutely. Like um here in the subdivision, like I've met quite a few of the locals and they'll either like if I'm just standing outside or whatever, they're all um they'll wave, they come over, have a conversation. Matter of fact, there was a neighbor's birthday the other day and he invited me over to have, you know, a couple of shots with them. And I thought that was pretty awesome. It, it, I don't play basketball, but you know, I occasionally will stroll down to the basketball court, you know, just to you know, hang out. And a lot of people think, oh, well, what about the language barrier? Yeah. It's not really an issue. I did have one funny thing happen to me last night as I was going to um, one of the Sorry Sorry stores. This kid, <laughs> this kid, he sees me from down the street and he just starts bolting running. He's like, Daddy! And I was like, uh, am I missing something? <laughs> it was the cutest thing ever. And he ran up, gave me a hug. And then we walked back towards where the store was because his 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 family lives right next door. <laughs> they thought it was the cutest thing ever. I was like, that's awesome. That would never happen in the U.S. Oh, OK. So you are shocked for sure. <laughs> Yeah, it was, it, you know, it was, it was a little, it wasn't really shocking in a bad way. It was just like, wow, that's different. It <laughs> ah, was something okay. that you would never see or never see in the U.S. ever. Because parents in the U.S., they teach the kids to not talk to strangers. Even if you just walk down the street and you wave at them, they, they're taught to not talk to strangers. Here, it's the complete opposite. Everybody wants to know who you are. Everybody wants to know you. Everybody wants to be friends. Yeah, especially the kids, like, hey, <laughs> hi, Tito, <laughs> hi, Kuya. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, what about you, uh, Jeff? Uh, I've had good experience with the locals. Uh, I've talked, had a few conversations. Uh, the most people I talk to, I don't talk to a lot because of the language barrier. Uh, I don't know if they feel their English isn't good enough, but it's, you know, kind of limited to uh, hello, how are you, you know. How long have you been here? Uh, but no, I, I mean, I've actually talked to my girlfriend's parents on Messenger and they've been very accepting people. So uh, I look forward to getting out, getting outside of town and getting to know more people. So hopefully I can learn some more Bessiah. Sure. That'll help a lot. <laughs> Uh, Jeff, I can refer you to a YouTube channel that this girl teaches Messiah, and she is 100% on point. <laughs> yeah, you can um, definitely search some, you know, channels. Well, I think between Texas and my girlfriend, I, I think I may have it covered, <laughs> but I'll, I'll check it out anyway. <laughs> well, yeah, it's really good. Like you can talk to the locals, like, you know um you can learn from them absolutely like what you said you know your wife and texas to soy like the ah. basic uh bisaya language ah sigi sigi <laughs> kumusta kumusta bayang buntag good morning <laughs> okay so bj i don't know if i could do it i get uh. you know if i have blowout mm -hmm. while using toilet paper <laughs> yeah, I got the basics. Actually, at first, it's really awkward or pretty awkward, but if you get used to it, well, it's easy. <laughs> uh, you can see on my page, the barbers. Okay. Okay, so we're just trying to chat with the big homie, Roger. Thank you so much, Beard. Steve-O, time for JFU's new clippers. First time in cut my hair. Uh, no, have a great day, everyone. Peace outside. All right. Thank you so much, Steve-O. Take your time. Okay. Texas uh, Tisoy Will Lapulapo is same as uh, Grouper Will T. <laughs> Grouper is the one fish I haven't tried yet, and I want to. 
but lapu lapu is i mean the price is a bit high <laughs> uh yeah but for yeah. me for me <laughs> that's right. it's 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 a, it's it's a bit pricey but it's also huge it's also like two kilos it's a it's a really big fish true you can't uh, consume it once then you can just put it on the fridge <laughs> yeah because if you sit there and eat that whole fish in one setting food coma is going to ensue <laughs> 20 <laughs> minutes later you'll be past a lot <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so um, now this is like uh, I want to really hear your opinion about this, guys. So, what do you like dislike about the Philippines? Like, I have to ask like the honest answer. Mm. Probably the uh, bureaucracy. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, tell me something about it. I mean, I go into immigration. I have to make sure I have a copy of everything. Uh, and you go to the, the store. I mean, you got three people checking you out, the cashier, the checker, and then the beggar. Uh, mm -hmm. Sometimes that doesn't make sense to me. Uh, sometimes the local traffic can kind of open my eyes quite a bit and kind of white knuckle it. Uh, but overall, you know, just other than the bureaucracy, you know, the hurry up and wait, you know, but I'm getting used to it. Okay. All right. What about Will? Uh, for me, it, it's, again, it's about location. Like where I live, it, to get downtown or to like, say, if I wanted to go up into Cebu City, just to get downtown, um, it, it's, it's a little bit of a hassle trying to find a ride because here in the province, you have either motorbikes or trikes. And it takes at least 15, it's a 15 minute ride just to get downtown. Now, once you get downtown, you can either take the bus or a jeepney. And I've taken both in various directions. And it's actually, it's actually pretty nice. It's pretty refreshing as long as you don't get stuck in traffic because there's no air con. Unless you take the, the Sirius bus, um, some of those buses have air cons. So my only thing is, it, it's just it's just based on location. Okay. Well, yeah, that's true. So, and uh, the the upside of foreigners in the PH is is easier to shield from chismis and crowd mentality. Yeah, just ignore about chismis and crowd mentality here in the <laughs> Philippines, guys. <laughs> oh, I don't I don't get involved with the chismis. I just, I let them, you know, do their thing because, hey, yeah, I want to talk about whatever, have fun. <laughs> if yeah, it helps yeah. you pass the time go by, so be it. Yeah, just, being just, a foreigner, you, know, you can enjoy. play dumb. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm just like, huh, what? No, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can say, uh, I'm I'm coming here to to enjoy my myself, not for chismes or what. <laughs> so yeah, just ignore them. <laughs> so, okay, so beard. I live in Jacksonville, Florida. My monthly bill in uh, apartment was uh, one hundred twenty-five dollars, and as homeowner, is three seventy-five. Okay, it's me. Is here <laughs> trying to clean. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Esme. Esme is really busy. <laughs> Hi, Esme. Okay, so, well, here in San Carlos, um, the apartment rent, as you can see the videos about Greg, uh, it's pretty good price, pretty good deal. And uh, that place is really cozy. So, you can really say that apartments in the philippines well it really depends on the place location especially when you are living in like big cities like manila for sure you need to expect that the, the apartment rent is a bit high right but if you are in a small town then you can really get a pretty good deal 
Yep. And it also, that's right. And it also depends on the island. Like, for instance, I found apartments in Cebu City for one or two bedroom apartments that the minimum was like 20000 Whereas to in Manila, it's, it was almost like here in the province, it's, a, it's they started about eight to 10 versus 20 and 30. Yeah, so um, what about in, in, oh, what about Jeff, your apartment? How much is, uh, you know, the rent? Your line is cutting off, Jeff. Well, I live in a uh, three-bedroom, two-bath house uh, in a gated community. <clears throat> I said I live in a, a subdivision, three-bedroom, two-bath, uh, 16 uh I didn't bother looking for another apartment because uh, Texas set me up with this house even before I got here. Uh, okay. So it's so I really can't, but I'm sure you can find some really uh, decent priced apartments around the city as long as you stay out of, out of downtown. It's pretty expensive down there. Mm, for sure. Well, um, I think you're since you are in the subdivision, well, you are pretty safe there. The neighborhood uh mm. you can live like comfortable with uh your neighbors for sure oh yeah that's i'm probably safer here than i was back in living when i was living in the states uh i mean they have 24-hour guards at the gate uh and when i'm out walking in the morning you know like 3 34 o'clock uh, they make the rounds on their motorbikes so that's cool. It's nice. So that's the good thing if you are uh, living in a gated community because um, time to time, like the guards or the guard will check room around mm -hmm. if everything is okay around the, you know, subdivision. Oh, yeah. The guards do that here well, multiple times a day and all throughout the night. They actually close the gate at about 1030 or 11 p.m., and they don't open it back up until 4 a.m. See, yeah, that's a good thing, right? So you can really say that, oh, okay, I'm, I'm really safe here. <laughs> yeah, and there's a guard house here. So whichever guards are on duty, like at night before they shift change in the morning, they have their own unit right there by the gate that, you know, they can stay in and, you know, basically live in while they're, you know, on duty. Yeah, and there are also CCTVs, right? Yes. Yep. And they're actually in the process. They're actually in the process of adding more. Um, right now, it's only clustered by the main gate because they want to see who comes in and who leaves. And the motorbike drivers and the trike drivers, as soon as they come in, they have to give their ID to the guard. So until they drop the person off or pick the person up that they're going to get. And then when they come back to the gate, the guards give them their ID cards back or driver's license. That's uh, pretty good because, you know, uh, who knows, right? But uh, that kind of system is really perfect for the people in the village or in the subdivision. Yep. And like for me, like if I take a motorbike or a trike somewhere, if I leave or come back, the guards, they, they all know me now. So when they see me, I'll, you know, wave to them. And they don't even take – half the time they don't take the um, – trike drivers um driver's license because they know where that they already know where they're going mm -hmm. you know when i'm in there um now if it's a trike driver or a motorbike driver that they don't recognize then yeah they will you know ask for their license to hold until they get back up to the gate okay all right so the barber said so what is your monthly electric bill so i picked up mine here i'm just gonna show it so last month our electric bill is really high like six thousand peso because we use uh, so much air con wow. <laughs> and now for the latest is three thousand eight hundred so if you can see i don't know if you can see it there you go yeah this is for uh, the month of uh, august since we stayed in the mountain for you know, a couple of weeks, so that's why the the cost 
is you know smaller compared to the previous months. Yeah, I was expecting my electric bill to be higher, but for whatever reason, it wasn't. The water bill, on the other hand, took a flip. <laughs> yeah, it's four thousand. That's oh, that's amazing, huh? <laughs> it's couple, weird. I, I got a, there's um, someone I know in Leyte. It was like, wow, four thousand pesos. That's what I pay about in a year for water there. I was like, wow. Um, He's here, like, his water bill is only about fifty to hundred pesos a month. Oh, okay. Here in my uh, place or in this apartment, we usually pay like around two twenty pesos. Uh, well, it really depends on your, you know, usage. Yeah, the first thing I said, I was like, well, what did I do? Start a car wash? <laughs> <laughs> a car wash business? <laughs> yeah, like, did I start a car wash business? Somebody got an Olympic-sized pool that I don't know about that I just filled up. <laughs> but it was because it, it was because of the leak. The, um, the toilet, the connection, they didn't, when they, because it's a brand new unit, they didn't put the gaskets back there. So the water was like, you looked at the meter and the meter looked like it was a turbo engine, a 2JZ engine just revving up. <laughs> I was like, what's going on? And the water district was just happened to be here the day we got the bill. So we asked them about it. They came out and looked at it and it was like, yeah, it's moving a little fast. And sure enough, it was because of the toilet. So the um, some of the contractors was also down the road. Luckily, they came in and just fixed it. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, thank you, Will. Mm -hmm. So through blind eyes, he said, "You guys are lucky. I just paid one sixty-five for electric bill like three days ago between two and seven p.m. Consumers' energy raised the uh, rates by fifty percent. Oh look, actually here also in San Carlos, guys." the the rates is really high it's like getting higher and higher now it's 16 pesos per kilowatt so uh not unlike i think in davao it's nine or ten peso i think it's gone up to about uh, about 12. 12. when i first got I here it was like almost seven then it went up to nine but they announced it had another rate increase yeah here in san carlos it's crazy it's like every month there's an increase like now it's 16. wow so, that's that's a lot and the the downside here also in san carlos is like you can encounter so much you know blackouts or brownout we call it here brownout mm -hmm. so like most often like every month maybe you will encounter like 40 to 50. Oh. oh wow that's, that's crazy lot. and you're still paying for you still have to pay for electric whether there's a brownout or not like it, yeah. it doesn't even matter i was yeah. like do you should that's a <laughs> there's one concern oh, you know, citizen there's one like concerned citizen like he made like a letter to tolfo to check the electric you know here in the in San Carlos, because <laughs> oh, the 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 amount is crazy. There's a I just saw, and uh, I think it was Phil Star, to where in Manila they're they passed a bill to where they're gonna start taking down all of the excess power and internet lines that are just there, not being used. I'm not sure if they're going to implement that countrywide, but um, from the article I read, they're going to start in Manila taking down all of the excess power lines or internet lines. That's just up because like down here in the province, you don't see it as much. But if you go up to like any city, like even in Cebu City, you look up at some of the power poles and it looks like spaghetti junction. You're like, what is what and what goes where? <laughs> <laughs> so they're they're in the process of starting to you know clear that up because it, it's it can be hazardous for you know some of these utility guys 
to go out there to work on the line, say after a brownout or a major storm or something, you really have to kind of know what you're doing. Otherwise, you've been to grab the wrong line. <laughs> and this 220 like is no wires, joke. Right? Yeah. You know, like I said, you don't really see it's not that bad here in the province. I mean, it, it's it compared to like, say, Manila or Cebu City. But which I think they should they're going to start doing the countrywide as far as, you know, clearing that up because it does add excess weight to it. So see, even a, a strong thunderstorm can cause a brownout. And it's it simply could be because of the weight of, you know, the excess wires being on there being moved around. Even heavy rain here in San Carlos as well, and Jeff, you need to expect that if there's like heavy rain, then there will be a brownout or a blackout. Yeah, I remember that from um, what, over a year ago. One of your, he was in the middle of doing a live, and then all of a sudden, you and Esme was doing a live, and then you guys had to stop it and it go outside because of oh, the brownout, and you were trying to use your mobile phone to do it. <laughs> That was crazy. So, um, well, what about you, Jeff? Have you ever um, like encounter brownouts in Davao? Yeah. Oh, your your line is cutting in and out, Jeff. Ah, uh, in spite of what Texas says. There has been about four or five brownouts here since I've got here. Uh, we I have had about four or five since I got here. I don't know if I'm usually they only last a couple of minutes. So mm. I don't know if you can hear me good? now. Or, good? Yeah. Yep, we hear you. Me. All good. All good. Can't do much about the, uh, the, the internet here. Okay. That's the worst one lasted about 20 minutes. That happened about two weeks ago. Last brownout. Okay. So I've only experienced the brownout here twice. Yeah, we I've only had a, a brownout here twice. And one of those times was because of a thunderstorm. And it, it lasted maybe 25, 30 minutes. Um, the second one, it was actually out for a little over an hour. Okay. But that was a few months ago. Recently, haven't had any. The thunderstorms here, though, in the province is, is, a, is a bit, you know, weird because... <laughs> I saw you your video. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was, it's a full-on thunderstorm for about 45 minutes before the rain starts. And then all of a sudden, the rain would start. And it's just like... How? <laughs> pretty, pretty amazing. And, you know, Filipinos will, this is the funny thing. If uh, we Filipinos hear, you know, thunderstorm or what, they will, or we will like go inside because, you know, thunderstorm is not safe. Then we have to go to, we have to go inside quickly. Like, okay, we have to hide. <laughs> Yep, everybody runs inside, and then I'm the one that's standing outside trying to get a good picture or a video of a lightning strike. And that last video I posted was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's because of the hills that's around us or the mountains range that's that's around us. When the thunder hits, it sounds like the sky just blew up. You can really like see. I've never heard I've never heard thunder like that before. That was that was pretty intense. So you are like in a war. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I paid thirty five dollars electric last month and in Mindanao. I use fans and room AC. Okay. What part in Mindanao? Okay, I just seen a video online on two tandem motorcycle riders and right and left gun down Filipino policeman. Pretty awful to see anyone killed. All right, okay, that's what Lapa Lapu is, Will T Grouper. I'm trying to hell you, bro. <laughs> Actually, we're so excited to come down to Davo, Jeff. 
uh, very close yeah. next month. <laughs> yeah. See you there. Keep, we'll keep the lights on. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so buddy just moved there to Bislik Farming there. All right, all right. And um, okay, this is a really important question also. Things that you've learned about the Philippines. Mm. You better have patience. That's what I learned. You better have a whole lot of patience because there <laughs> are things that you will see or experience that makes no sense whatsoever. Case in point, uh, literally a month ago, I went up to the city to the Bureau of Immigration to extend my visa for six months. Mm -hmm. One of the immigration workers um, told me that I could not get a six month visa extension unless I was married. Mm -hmm. We okay. all know that's not true. I calmly said, no, nope, that's that's not exactly true, sir. How do you get and a, sold that? I, that, I said, that's not exactly true. And then, you know, he was like, OK, so we do six months or two months. Basically, he just didn't want to do the six month extension. So I, in turn, went left, went around the corner to an agency and they actually had my extension done by 3 p.m. the following day. And I got there at 4.10 in the afternoon. And on the paperwork, the actual extension, it was processed at 3, a little after 3 p.m. Maybe, maybe the first one. Three, it was actually 3 o'clock on the dot. Here's the receipt. Mm. It was it was processed the very next day at 3 p.m. However, they did tell me I have to wait uh, one to three months for my ACRI card because the Cebu office doesn't have their printer isn't working and they have to get it from Manila. Mm. And it's been a month and I still don't have it, but. OK, you're lying. Uh, well. We can hear you. Oh, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Okay, Jeff. Oh, okay, go ahead. Well. No, what 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 part did you what was the last thing you heard? Um about the uh, you know, that you get to Manila to get the you know, the ACR card in Manila. Is the oh, yeah, no. not working. Yeah, they said the um, printer in Cebu isn't working, so they had to process it in Manila, and it takes one to three months. It's already been one month, so whenever and I call them every other week or every week to you know check on it to see if it's ready for me to go pick it up, so that way I can take it. And like I said, as soon as I get it, the first thing I'm doing is I'm going straight to the LTO to get that taken care of to get my license switched over. Okay. And uh, Jeff? Uh, I probably, you know, some patience. Uh, was, I was a kind of expecting that. Uh, uh, the other thing that kind of surprised me, uh, how, how I, want, I don't want to say they use the word more up to date or modern, but the stores are nice. Uh, a lot of newer cars driving around. Uh, uh, that just, you know, I mean, I was, I actually was all uh, pleasantly surprised how nice things were. I was expecting, you know. I'm still here, guys. Okay. Okay. I was expecting something, you know, be more, I was expecting more province than an urban area. Uh, but overall, you know, hasn't been a whole lot that I hadn't expected. So, of course, I can say, like Will, watched a lot of vlogs, read a lot of books and articles. So I, yep. I mean, I, can, I think that's the best thing anybody can do is prepare yourself, read, exactly. study. I, sure, when sure. I was doing my research, one of the first things I looked at is I wanted to see everything bad first. I wanted to get all the negative out of the way. I wanted to know the, the, you know, just how bad can it be? And then I was like, 
Well, that's just like anywhere. I've been to Djibouti, so Djibouti, Africa, uh, Ethiopia. So I, I've seen some pretty bad stuff, and I'm just like, all right, well, I can live with that. And it was it was just simple. It was like, all right. So now, so I knew what to expect, and. I intentionally went to some areas to see it in person because, you know, it's how they say it's one thing to see something on TV than it mm-hmm. is to see it in person. That was one. That was my thing. I'm like, all right. So I've seen it on TV. Now I see it in person. Now I see what everyone was talking about. All right, cool. Didn't bother me none. It, it didn't bother me at all. I wasn't, you know, it, it, it didn't rub me the wrong way. In other words, it, it was just like, all right, that's. It is what it is, you know, but the big thing for me was no matter what, the people are still smiling mm. throughout everything. That right there is, is if, if, if you're not human, you can't understand how oh. humbling that can be. <laughs> yeah, even Filipinos yeah. like have big problems, but... You know, we learn how to smile every day. <laughs> every single day, no matter what. And I love it. Yeah, nothing seems to get them down for very long. Yep. Okay, so uh, thank you so much uh, for that. And, uh, you know, um, all we need to do is, like, since you are here now in the, in the Philippines, then... Just enjoy, explore Philippines. If you have time to travel, then yeah, this is our advice. Roam around Philippines, guys. Now I plan on doing that pretty pretty much after the first of the year. You know, leaving the island. Try other islands out. Okay. Well, by the way, well, you said that uh, you will move to Angeles City back, right? That yeah, that is that is a possibility. It's contingent on my upcoming appointment at the VA. Um, the reason I would make that choice is mainly because if there if I'm gonna have more than one appointment a month for say the next three months, it's just logical to you know move out there so it's closer versus having to fly or take the ferry back and forth from Cebu. The ferry takes a whole day, about twenty two hours. Um, Mm-hmm. Flights, uh, th- their prices change almost hourly. <laughs> <laughs> so it's fine. like, yeah. So it's like, okay, you can find one for one price, and then three hours later, the price done changed. So, you know, it, it just would make more sense to be closer to it. That way, I can just get there and not have to plan. All right, I need to do this, 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 and this versus just going from point A to point B. Okay, so, um, sorry for that. My my camera is not working, but anyhow, you can hear me loud and clear, right? Yes, absolutely. All right, so I'm still fixing, but, well, um, they said some of, uh, like, foreigners, and say that Philippines is not safe. Well, um, you can really ha- say that if you only focus on the situation where you saw or see online, like the bad happenings. But if you change your mind, like, okay, I will go there. I really want to witness what is Philippines. Then um, that's why we always said that just come over here in the Philippines, try to experience what is really philippines right exactly so it's totally different when you are just looking at online than better to experience Mm -hmm. in in person yeah like if people say for the people that say that it's not safe in the philippines if it wasn't safe i wouldn't be able to walk through anywhere and see people with their front doors wide open Mm -hmm. i mean everybody for the most part will you know, once they're up for the day, front door goes open and it stays open <laughs> until <laughs> until either they yeah. leave the house to go somewhere, like to leave to go like downtown or whatever, or they're going to sleep. Other than that, their doors stay wide open. 
Like I can guarantee if I looked out my door right now, I'd see two neighbors with their front doors wide open. And it's every single day. So if it wasn't if it wasn't safe, the locals would Absolutely. Well said, uh, Will. What about Jeff? Uh, yeah, I've heard about, you know, the, the areas and I've talked to some people who live here and, and like any, any country, there's places you don't belong. Even in the United States, there's places, I mean, just watch the news, but, uh, <laughs> but, but even on, uh, I mean, Mindanao it's, gets, it's the, exactly. uh, gets most of the blame, but it was about a month ago, Roger, I think the NPA executed a man there on Negros in front of his family. So violence can happen anywhere. Just yeah, yeah. you just gotta just gotta be careful and listen to the locals. They'll tell you where it's safe. Absolutely, guys. So there yeah, we always we always say this, like it's just that uh their mind is not wide open to it. So they don't really understand well, like what you said, well, that we have to use our common sense, right? Yep, absolutely. Because here's the thing: as a foreigner, you know, like I've I've noticed there's quite a few foreigners here in you know this area. Um, like when I go downtown, granted, I'm not sure. I, I'm I'm almost certain that most of them are from Australia or certain parts of Europe. But yeah, it's like if you're out and if you're out and about. You're a foreigner, so of course everyone's going to have their eyes on you, and you kind of need to do the same. Especially for me, I'm six foot two, so if I go into any store, I'm automatically taller than everyone. So <laughs> all security security can just look and be like, "Okay, there he is. Okay, now he's over there." <laughs> <laughs> or like, like just prime example. Yesterday when I went to the mall, you know. I was, I kind of felt somewhat like a giant because everybody I walked by, they were all like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just, and, and I'm just like, hi, how you doing? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> They'll stare at you like head to toe. <laughs> like, oh yeah, they they give you the up and down stare. <laughs> up and, yeah, absolutely. So <laughs> you have you have to like get used to that. When you are in the Philippines, <laughs> yeah, because it's like I'm. If for the most part, I'm the same complexion, but everybody's like, "Okay, that's not a Filipino because he's way too tall." <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Casey traveling around the Philippines for thirty days starting Tuesday. Oh, welcome, very soon. <laughs> okay, here's the questions to the foreigners. So you guys feel safe walking around in the poor areas? Okay. Yep. Uh, I haven't really walked around in in the uh, the poor areas. Uh, you know the uh, what they call you know, slums. the slums. The uh, slums area. I haven't really gone down there. Uh, I'm kind of you know my better angels kind of tell me you know stay out of there. You know, the squatters areas. Uh, but for the most part, I felt pretty safe walking around outside of the, the subdivision. Mm -hmm. so, so. Yeah, I, I, I've i actually walked around out here. And cause the Barangay Hall is actually right up the street. But I've walked around by myself, didn't feel any kind of threats or threatened at all. It was, you know, matter of fact, there was a party up the street and I'm pretty sure that if I walked by and said hello, I might have ended up there for the next couple of hours just hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> they would say for sure. I mean, they will invite you to drink. <laughs> yeah, like, like my neighbor across the street. <laughs> I don't remember. I don't remember what it was that they were drinking, but it's you know because they see me every day. <laughs> yeah. Right. So Tick says that's a good idea. It must feel like the good old days here in the states. Okay. 
So here, I've met the nicest, friendliest, warmest, and most dangerous, I mean, most generous people in slums. Kiddos, failures around the world. Well, uh, I will tell you that just be, um, be cautious careful. when you are, yeah, be careful when you are walking in, in slums area. Because we do not know, right? There's always that yeah. one. There's always that one that will feel froggy. Yep. Like I personally, when I go, because I'm going to Manila next week, um, I actually want to, I'm going to be in Pasai, but I'm actually going to head up to Tondo. Yeah, Tondo, Manila, um, that place, you really have to be, be careful. That kind well, of place. The, but the funny thing about that area is people go through there and film all the time. And I do mean all the time. So if they can do it, you know, all the time, it can't be that bad. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, because you think about it, like if some if you if you look and you see the same person or the same um, the same people doing multiple videos in the same exact area yeah. and nothing's happening you can't say that well that's that's a bad area because if it was that bad they wouldn't be over there vlogging you can you can you it's a great experience walking around because um it's like new to to you guys right like walking oh. in the in the slums or poor areas but uh make sure that there will be like uh, a filipino that uh will guide you if you uh really want to experience just to yeah, see what yeah, yeah. it really looks like yeah it's definitely mindful if you go to some of those areas to have a filipino with you um not not so much for protection but just for the language barrier because mm -hmm. um not everyone speaks Bisaya. a lot of people speak tagalog so in manila it's mostly tagalog versus Bisaya. they may understand some of it but for the most part the primary language is english and tagalog so it, it just makes sense yeah. and it's kind of like covering your own behind by having a local with you to kind of help you out or guide you through some of these areas so true so true um, so most people live in the slums area um they can't really speak uh, english well so all they need is to use their you know bad language so that's better <laughs> yep uh, and i think for the most part like the locals they 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 know what your intentions are just by looking at you like if you if you're walking around and you got this mean look on your face like you mad at the world that your body language is going to project that and they're going to say oh what's this guy's problem <laughs> you know so their whole demeanor is going to change and then you know it's a chain reaction mm -hmm. and, and it's funny because here in the Philippines, there's a, the, the, you know, back in the States, we have this old saying through the grapevine, or there's an old game called telephone. You start with one message, and by the time it gets to the line, the message is completely different. Now, <laughs> here in the Philippines, it, you don't need technology for something to get from one province to a whole nother island within 24 hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, okay, uh, Jeff yes okay uh, can you what was okay. what was the question now <laughs> okay can you can you hear me can you hear me yes i can hear you okay very good so for sure guys you you miss like um like a food from the west right anything you miss <laughs> that you can find here uh, in the philippines oh geez bro <laughs> Not a whole lot. There's, I mean, actually having a hot dog in a bun with some chili mm. sauce and cheese, real cheese. I kind of miss that. Um, now, you know, little stuff like that. Uh, you now, some of the uh, 
Actually, I miss buying clothes my size. <laughs> you know, it's you very hard to, to find it here. Yeah, <laughs> the two and three X. You're starting to, uh, you know, really start looking at the catalogs from from back in the states. But uh, you know, just I mean, there are just some little things that I can, you know, you know, I can live without. So, so far, I've been able to find some local substitutes that work pretty well. Uh, okay. Ground coffee is another thing. Okay, have you tried to uh, have a, uh, a local co uh, coffee? Yes, I have Native some in one? the coffee shops. Yes, and very delicious. And uh, strong, right? <laughs> oh yeah. Well, not to me, but I'm. But I like uh, I like coffee you can walk on. <laughs> <laughs> it makes you awake. <laughs> yes. Okay, what about the wheel? Uh, it's not really any foods I miss from back home because I've generally been able to find it here or I've been more more apt to try all the local food. So mm -hmm. I don't really miss any food from back home. The only thing I do miss from back home is being able to find shoes my size. I've been oh. to five different malls between the island of Luzon and Cebu and nobody, and I do mean nobody, has a size 48 and a half. Mm, that's a so, trouble. We can maybe just order online. I don't know I, if you can find one. I would have to order it online um, and have it shipped. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, through blind eyes, hey, Texas, so you've been in the uh, Philippines for a while. Do you have any kind of solar panels uh, or panels set up? Have you seen uh, Jeff? Uh, as far as I know, Texas doesn't have any solar panels. Mm, okay. Well, that's, um, I've seen a lot of, you know, uh, houses, especially in Bacolod, Cebu, they uh, use solar. They can really save money for that. So. But the thing is, um, getting solar panels set up is really expensive. <laughs> you really have to invest. You know, being here in Davao, the power grid so reliable. You know, solar panels be nice, but you really don't need them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I think here in San Carlos, people really need that because we <laughs> encounter yeah. like a lot of brownouts <laughs> every month. Yeah. Which is kind of ironic. Isn't there a, a solar panel farm just outside of San Carlos, Roger? Sorry, Jeff? Isn't there a, like a solar panel farm just right outside San Carlos? Uh, actually, there is like in, in San Carlos, but uh, I do not know if there will be a support from coming from the farm. Yeah. There's a huge farm here in San Carlos, actually. That's what I was saying. It's kind of the irony. You've got all yeah. that solar power just right out of outside of town, but yet you still have all the brownouts. Well, it's a main concern of you yeah. know the people right here, because. Uh, where like they because there's a huge farm here and then where they like get the supply like it mm -hmm. should be there is like a cold backups right mm -hmm. but no hell yeah we still encounter yeah. a lot of brownouts so uh, actually right. people here in san carlos uh it, they're complaining already yeah so, like they have to pay, you know, really huge. And then how come they were, we're, we're still encountering a lot of brownouts every month. Okay. So, Vigan is nice little city in Ilocos. Okay. Yeah. The, I've seen the like videos in Vigan. It's a beautiful place too. Okay. Texas, uh, Thor Blind Eyes, all in saying bigger city. 
Sabus will be best since if anything go wrong, all equipment and parts are there most likely not having to ship it to remote areas. Okay, so the quest. We are in far more danger here in America. I believe that 100% kids in schools are getting shot here. It's disgusting. You don't hear or see that happening in the Philippines at all. Uh, for sure, uh, it's going to happen in, in the West, right? Uh, I've seen so many videos about this kind of situation. Yep. But uh, it's very rare to happen here in the Philippines. So, is it like common in the West? Well, in America, there's there's weekly shootings. Weekly, wow. Yes. Yeah, weekly. I'm used to seeing daily shootings in Florida. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I scary, figure, man. <laughs> I forget how many thousands of people have been killed through gun violence in the United States so far this year. Ooh. So that's why I'm pretty, or we're pretty amazed that um, mostly foreigners also that have gone to experience here in the Philippines, they will say, ah, Philippines is safe. Especially those foreigners that had experience living in the Philippines already. I can I can say, you're probably you're safer here than back in the United States. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. I don't care what part of the United States you're from, you're definitely safer here. <laughs> <laughs> Case in point, like if you go downtown, you know you're gonna bump into somebody whether they bump into you or you bump into them. But at least here, you don't have to worry about, am I going to get stabbed or shot within the next 30 seconds? <laughs> yeah. The worst you can get here is maybe a dirty look. Right, right. Or, if you, do. or if you bump into somebody here, you might just met your new best friend. Yeah. <laughs> in yeah, the yeah. states in the states that would never happen. Um when I saw like houses in the United States or in the West, their house is not gated, not unlike here in the Philippines. <laughs> Why uh, is that? Gen generally no. Because usually uh there's plenty of locks on every door on every window in the United States. Uh, a lot of people have, you know, no trespassing signs. Okay. Uh, and like in the United States, you don't go into somebody's house without an invitation. Because chances are you might get shot. That's the thing. Oh. That's the thing. Oh, in Florida, there that that's a guarantee. That's a gay. You go into somebody's house, you don't belong. Oh, you, you ain't even got to go in the house. Just being on their property. The probability yeah. of you being shot is about ninety percent. Either that, either, either that, or their dog's gonna get you. You know, <laughs> Florida, Florida, and Texas is one of those states. Just your car is an extension of your house, so <laughs> it, it's it, it's crazy. For instance, in Florida, they will have a hunting season. For say it's hog hunting season. The season is supposed to last a few weeks, right? In Florida, every time they open up the hunting season, it opens and closes on the same day for the entire season. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So I think uh, Asian people should really learn um, about your culture as well, how you like do this in the west because it's really opposite here so because filipinos can just go to the neighbor's house like say hello hello ayo 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 okay so ms said i think the reason filipinos can smile is because of 
the bahala na mentality which is good but also has an unfortunate side to it well yeah that's that's true that's true um we just say okay even if we have problems okay bahala na we have to smile but there's like yeah. a downside also of the word bahala na because there are bits like uh we can say but filipinos get just like very uh what do you call this complacent in terms of the word bahala na like for example if you can do something today people or filipinos say okay bahala na i will do it tomorrow <laughs> is the thing the bahala na word <laughs> yeah. oh, my first yep. time asking for a hot dog bun in th i was told no hot dog bun hot dog rice <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. The only, yell- thing, I've ex- uh, the only thing I've experienced with food is like I've gone to a few places and wanted a cheeseburger and they didn't have them. Mm-hmm. Mm. That's that's about it. Or I would end up going to Jolly Bee and they run Jollibee. out of chicken. <laughs> <laughs> or McDonald's. <laughs> McDonald's is usually they usually don't run out of stuff. Although I heard that there is a sugar shortage, so soft drinks are like sodas and stuff are becoming a little difficult to, to get. But I don't really drink soda, so that doesn't bother me any. As long as I have sweet tea, I'm good. Water, Bacari sweat, I'm good. Yeah. Okay, so. Which do you prefer, a uh, city or like a province? Well, I can't speak to the province, but so far, city life's been pretty good. I I would have to say city. Okay. Only only because it's very much more accessible to get to re- different stores like a Seven Eleven or virtually any store, really. Yeah. Um, a lot of times in the city, it's they're within walking distance. Um, in the province, not so much. You'll have to, you know, find a ride if you don't have your own your own transportation. So it can be just a little bit of a hassle, just a little bit. Well, Other than that, why, yeah. I mean, I chose Davao, the city, because of the hospitals, you know, healthcare. At my age, a heart attack or a stroke could be right around the corner. And they got what they call that golden hour. If I can get to the mm-hmm. hospital within an hour, you know, chances are I'll survive. So yeah, that's a that's a actually really good that you are close to, uh, like, hospital, which they can provide mm-hmm. everything. Um, here is in Carlos. That's the downside also, because uh, they don't have so much equipments and all that stuff if you are in a severe um, condition so you have to travel you have to go to Bacolod or Cebu so, now <clears throat> uh, later this month I'll be going out to the province to visit my girlfriend's parents so I'll have a better idea then so we're gonna go down there for about a week So pretty much in Man- in Cebu and Manila, uh, they have really good hospitals too. Mm. So. But. Okay, straight blind eyes. Oh, okay, go ahead, Jeff. Anything no, I was to gonna say I I know about the hospitals in Cebu and Manila, but Manila is just too crowded, and and Cebu City is kind of the same thing. Uh, what I like about so far about the vow, it's a probably one of the biggest cities but it's so spread out you don't feel like you're in a big city okay so it's like uh davao is not crowded and mm-hmm. pretty much everything you can you can find in davao yes oh okay by the way will can you try to uh talk to us or share your experience since you 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 live in um uh, angeles city right <laughs> Well, I've I've visited Angeles Angeles City 
on about three or four different occasions. Um, a lot of traffic, a lot of traffic. Um, <laughs> uh, as far as um, stores goes, like there's like the area that I stayed in was just down the road from Koreatown. So there's quite a few convenience stores um, that stay open 24 hours. One of them is called Sing Sing. Mm -hmm. um, so if you need load for your phone, they have it there. Um, they sell food there, obviously, like, you know, the package stuff, nothing cooked. Um, all your drinks, you know, all your soft drinks, um, beer. Um, they have all this, all this stuff you basically need. Um, everything pretty much is in close proximity. There's a Robinson's down the road from where I was staying. Um, not far from the famous Walking Street, which that's a whole nother uh, area within itself. That's kind of hilarious. Um, <laughs> But yeah, it was it was it was nice. Um, even with the rain, um, in Angela City, you will see a lot of foreigners. I mean, a lot from all over the place. You know, but they they seem to be clustered around the Balibago area. Mm -hmm. It's simply because they all want to. The reason they they choose that area is because of they want to be close to Walking Street. They want to literally be able to just walk from wherever they're staying to there, or take a quick five minute you know trike ride there because the trike station is only down the road, or the jeepney station is only right down the road. But as far as food, almost anything you want, you can find. Okay. So I've heard uh, the nightlife is really crazy there. <laughs> oh, yes, to say the <laughs> least. It is, it, is, it is funny and crazy all at the same time. Um, I was in that area just because I've seen it on YouTube. I'm like, right, let me check this out for myself. And I want experience. <laughs> it, it, was, it, was, it was definitely different from the U.S. Um, do you just... Um, you go past a, a bar, and they have bars, pubs. It, it, it's a combination between bars, pubs, and restos. Mm -hmm. And depending on the atmosphere that you want will depend on the establishment that you go to. Um, there's also some that's off in the back area, and they cater to everybody, whether you're, you know, no matter what your sexual orientation is, you can find a place in that area that suits your desires. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and and and, yeah. The, and 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 again, the people are friendly. They won't bother you. Like you, there are some, you know, some people that are, uh, you know, try to coerce you into going to this place or that place, but they're not aggressive with it. You know, they're more passive with it. You know. And it's it's kind of refreshing versus in the states. It's the opposite, you know. They're like, "Oh, you got to come here," handing out flyers like, "You got to come here." Blah, blah, blah. Uh, this hold on, you know, you know here what? in that area, nobody hands out flyers, which I think is awesome. However, when it comes to the malls, there are some malls. To where the sales reps, I th I think there's a bit too many of them for some of these um, stores or kiosks in the malls. Like I've seen some kiosks where there's four or five and six people working there. And they're mm -hmm. all, instead of it being one or two people that are approach you, all of them would approach you to, whether it's to buy a phone case or tempered glass screen protector for your phone. <laughs> yeah, I, I've i never, like the sales tactics, I mean, it works, don't get me wrong, it's great, it's just, it's different from the U.S., like in the U.S., you can walk past the kiosk and they'll, you know, they'll literally be within the kiosk and they'll say something to you, but they won't approach you, whereas to here, the people are more friendly, they want to approach you, you know, and, you know, actually try to conversate with you. 
in the U.S., everybody's like, no, keep your distance. <laughs> you know what? I really want to, you know, to go to Angeles City just to experience and what it really looks like uh, during night outs because it's not like here in San Carlos, it's pretty much laid back. And I want to make videos about, you know, during nightlife or what. <laughs> There's a lot of clubs. <laughs> oh, by the way, guys, I have to pass it through Esme because I have to fix the camera. Okay. Okay. Uh, hi, guys. What's happening? <laughs> oh, it's me. Yeah, I... Roger is trying to fix the camera right now. I don't know what's happening, but yeah, how are you guys? Pretty good. Yeah. Loving life. <laughs> this yeah, is the first going time. Pretty good. Yeah. First time I see Jeff Strong. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hi, Jeff. Never <laughs> seen actually you in person, but yeah, yeah, it's good to see you in video. Well, yeah, brother, I seen you twice already. <laughs> <laughs> what's happening <laughs> doing fine so casey i don't sleep with a gun our neighborhood is crime free wow uh, so for me i've seen a lot of videos about foreigners having guns but i i don't mm -hmm. think the philippines would do that i don't know because they have a strict rule here about guns i think you already know that yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Here, here in the Philippines, uh, foreigners are not allowed to own firearms. However, what you can own is an airsoft gun <laughs> because it is not considered a firearm. And you just simply <laughs> it, it, now it, it is extremely hard to find them. I've literally only found one place in Cebu City to where this girl, sell, this lady sells them. And they're a bit pricey, but they are, they are, they are the real thing. Yeah, because uh, there was actually a location there when the Airsoft was popular back in the days in Cebu. And it's in the Cebu Zoo before, but now Cebu Zoo is, it's not there anymore. It's already closed. Airsoft right. was performed there at Cebu Sioux because they have a huge forest that, that they can do that. But how about you, Jeff? Have you tried like searching for airsoft the same as Will? <laughs> uh, no, I'm, I'm not really into guns. However, <laughs> I would like good. to find a water pistol. I got a pesky <laughs> cat on my back porch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, water water guns are easy to find. Just go to any mall and quite quite honestly, go to the kids department. <laughs> I mean, I was kind of wondering about those airsoft guns because I mean, you know, it's a, it is a gun, and the foreigners aren't allowed to own guns. So, yeah, I just never really gave it much of a thought. To tell you the truth, just get and you I, a bolo. Just get yes. you a nice. Just get you a nice big bolo. You're that's, good. That's nice to know, Jeff. That you're. <laughs> A peaceful guy. <laughs> uh, I can, if I try to wield the bolo, I'd probably cut my own head off. <laughs> Besides, okay. I got a Filipina. She'll protect me. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. But, you know, uh, when it comes to, like, your Filipina would own a gun, like, most of them won't like it. Like you can see me, guys, right? Yeah, you can yep. see me now. Yep, yeah. and you're right. Most Filipinas will not; they do not like the idea of guns. Yeah, even for me, I get nervous if I see, I I see a, a foreigner or like someone owning a gun, and yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I I feel so nervous about it. But okay there's Next. a there's there's quite a there's quite a few gun ranges in Cebu city um and out in manila the gun range that i would go to is gimmick clark it's over in clark it's called gimmick they it's a huge compound they you can actually ride quads through there 
you can, there's a gun range there. Uh, there's, um, I believe it's, I, they have an archery range there too, as well as a course for, I believe, paintball or airsoft. Okay, that's good. Okay, I'll just give it to, to Roger instead. Okay, sorry for the inconvenience. <laughs> Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. All right. right. Clear. Okay. Yeah. That's right. Okay. Because I need to, to make yeah. sure that everything is good. Okay. There we go. So, Casey, I'd rather live in a city, province. It's nice to visit, though. Well, yeah. Um, the good thing staying in the province. You can you can save a lot. That's a good thing, and uh, pretty the, the life is pretty simple, and uh, you can you can say that there's so mu there's no so much like stress compare uh, when you are living in the city. But the thing is, um, if you are a type of person that you want to have like pretty accessible to everything, and especially like. Um, hospital and what then uh, i would say city is really good right yep okay I so agree. actually since us oh. or me especially i used to like live in the mountain well you know guys you already i think you already know that we're thinking of moving in the mountain because we really want to like save uh, a lot, like for Haley's future for our daughter. Then, because we are, because we're thinking about if we have to stay here in the city and then paying a lot of you know bills, then yeah, we can save. But the thing is, um, the monthly rental and the electric bill that we have to pay every month instead of uh paying that we can really save that if we have to stay in the mountain not unless if we have our have our own house here then we can save it then we're thinking about okay uh we will move to the mountain and then save money there and uh we have to buy a land in the future here in the city so that Haley's when she uh, goes to school then it's easy for her because in the mountain the the school is really far like you have to walk two hours before <laughs> you can reach the school you really have to walk two hours wow that's a long that's not a walk that's not a walk that is an expedition <laughs> <laughs> a long hike <laughs> We're talking about huge bags. and you have to carry also, you have to carry huge, you know, bags. <laughs> Actually, we have yeah. a friend. Um, we have a friend yeah. that he wants to visit the mountain. Uh, if you know Robert Jeff, um, he will. Mm -hmm. He wants to visit, or he wants to go with us in the mountain. Uh, you know Robert Jones. Yes. Yes, sir. and I've chatted a few times. Okay. okay. He wants to experience. <laughs> okay. And I, I, I told him that, okay, you can try, but, you know, um, you can really say that, oh, wow, this is a long hike. <laughs> what you said, well, oh, this is an expedition. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, Roger, that new bridge ah. you're, you want to build, is okay. it closer to the highway and to the village? Where you live? Um, not that close. From the highway, you have uh, to walk like 15, 15 mm -hmm. minutes. But there is another bridge, like the, the bamboo one that I already showed you before. The one from the highway, you have to walk at like 30, 30 minutes. Well, and then from... I'm 
from my house or from my parents' house, it's like 20. Because that one is in the middle. Mm -hmm. so like about 20 minutes. No, because I've seen you go to your parents' place. It seemed like you have to go quite a hike. I just wonder <laughs> if you put the new bridge, it might cut that distance down some. That is a hike, and that's a lot of uphill battles. So yeah, it's it, it's real easy to, to roll an ankle, especially yeah, right. when you're carrying a bunch of stuff. All it Absolutely. takes is to step on something, you know, loose shoal, or you look down and yeah. you see a rock, you think it's stable, and then you step on it, and next thing you know, you you can tumble back down the hill. It, it's it, it's all, it almost makes you want to go buy cle uh, baseball cleats. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? When when we stayed in the mountain and then I really lost some weights, like from 82 down to 77. And I am now 77. Yeah. By walking there for, for like 30 minutes and then you have to carry uh, heavy stuff, then... I'm now 77 <laughs> from 82 kilograms. <laughs> yeah, I'm waiting on my other three Balak Byron boxes to get here. So one of them's got my scale in it. I'm interested to see what I weigh now because I know since I've been here, I lost at least 15 pounds. <gasps> that's that's yeah, what, same I observe, here. Uh, what I observe also, like first month, when you come here in the Philippines, you can really gain weights, right? Uh, it's been the opposite for me. Yeah, it was, I was about to say, it's been the opposite for me. I haven't really gained weight. Um, now, some people say, oh, you'll gain weight if you, you know, eat all the local foods because a lot of stuff is fried. I like fried stuff, but it, it, it's all in moderation. Like, if I'm sitting there eating, you know lechon all day every day then yeah i i end up <laughs> blowing up like a blimp <laughs> no i've been pretty much eating local food uh like i said i've dropped uh, two clothes sizes so far i've only been here you know three months of course i get up and try to walk for half hour to 45 minutes a day uh, which helps but i have I have this wonderful thing behind me called the Stairmaster. I'm yeah. constantly up and down those stairs. <laughs> if you look over, like also, look yeah. over my left shoulder, you can see I've got one of yep. those too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, is it like uh, the pathway? Is it or the stairs? Is it like small or? The, you know, it's, it's it's narrow. Narrow. Oh yeah, it's much narrower here than it is back in the states. And the steps are actually shorter too. So yeah. going up isn't necessarily the tricky part. Going down the stairs can be the tricky part. Like in my place here, we actually have non-stick or non-skid uh, strips at the edge of the step. So that like when I'm in slippers or whatever, I don't just slide off the step. <laughs> <laughs> because they're so yeah, the narrow. Yeah, same here going down is... If you just let, if yours like mine, you got a window there. I got a wall yeah. there, so it's like if we fall, it's not going to end well. <laughs> okay, so um, yeah, because okay, going I down, to... gravity's going to have its way with you. Yep. <laughs> okay, so DJ said some say two thousand dollars a month is the starting sweet uh, spot. It ensures financial security. If you have any issues, it's all on how you choose to live, and you can live on less. Yep, that think. is. I, I agree with that. I agree with that. Okay. It, you, you can, you can, you know, you can live pretty nice yeah. on two thousand like dollars a month or less. Yeah. So it takes us to sorry, but you can manage for way less than that bj yeah uh, absolutely i agree with uh texas this way that you're really yeah, like to, to make a, re a remark mm -hmm. i'd like to make a, a 
comment to uh, through blind eyes he was worried about is what he has every month i can do a quick breakdown through my rent my mm -hmm. utilities my internet i'm under 380 dollars a month for my philippine and i and i groceries run about 200 a month uh maybe another 100 or so for incidentals you know stuff we don't need but what we like to have so if you got a thousand dollars you can live fairly comfortably uh the big thing for me is I have to look into some health insurance because Phil Health yeah. is not going to cut it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, so it, it, with what you really got, depends. brother, you should make you should be able to get by pretty well. So, sorry, I didn't, didn't mean, but okay. So, um, by the way, guys, I have to to end the live around. Uh, be 11 45 because i have to prepare for for the lunch <laughs> so yeah. i think it's 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 time for us to eat lunch as well <laughs> yeah i've got my lunch so. all ready to go oh okay so yeah um by the way guys thank you so much for joining us uh joining me today it's uh really an honor and hopefully guys to meet you in person uh will and jeff and hopefully, if you have time also, you can visit us here in San Carlos. Yeah. Um, you are pretty much welcome here just, you know, to see what, yeah. what San Carlos is. Awesome. Thanks. It's a, it's a pleasure being well, here. Well, look, I'm honored look forward to, to seeing you next month. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Same We're here. It's the, it's, it's the bird months. Yeah. It's the second day of the bird months. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Merry Christmas, so, everybody. <laughs> Christmas is fast approaching <laughs> in the yeah. Philippines. And then kids will always there for you. Oh, can I ask something? <laughs> Watch out for that, guys. Oh, yeah. Kids on the street. <laughs> it, that, now, that I've seen uh, in Angeles. Mm. I have seen that in Angeles, not so much here in Cebu, but in Angeles, yes, I have seen that. You'll be amazed of, you know, like uh, Christmas caroling. Yeah. <laughs> Kids will go to your house or apartment. I'm, I'm just waiting to start hearing the Christmas music in the mall. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, uh, I think, guys, uh, we need to, to eat our, our lunch. Um, I think for sure your food is ready. Uh, I have to say, like once again, thank you so much for joining me today. So, anything to say before uh, we end this um, live, uh, Jeff? Uh, if you have any idea, you think you're going to be coming here, you know, prepare as best you can, keep an open mind, enjoy life. It's it's not it's not a big journey, really. The, the air flight's the worst part of it. So, come and enjoy. Yes, yes, I totally, I second that notion. If you guys are coming, just, just come. I mean, it's, life is beautiful here. There's so many, there's over 7,000 islands here in the Philippines, guys. Like, come on. True. True. <laughs> there's no other place in the world where you can literally, <laughs> you have a choice of island. Like, literally, this month I'm going to go here, this month I'm going to go here. You can do that between 7,000 islands here. <laughs> And it's easy to get to. You don't have to always fly to these places. Yep. You can take a boat, take a ferry. I'm taking a ferry to Manila for the yep. first time next week. <laughs> so you have to sleep then. <laughs> In a ferry. Okay, yeah. Dead. Um, guys, if yep. you have planned to come and, and, and stay or visit Philippines, like yep. what they said, just enjoy. Uh, and, you know. Just enjoy, room around Philippines. Yeah, explore. Explore and enjoy. It's the best thing to do when you are in the Philippines. Absolutely. All right. So, guys, I think that's pretty much about it for today. No. And thank you so much once again. And God bless. Keep safe. Yep. God bless, take bro. care, everybody. All right. Take, take care. Jeff. Enjoy your Come food. Yeah. <laughs> I'm about to go make some coffee. <laughs> Hey, thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye. -bye. Yeah. Bye.